Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for attending our CHUG LLP webinar today. My name is Sasha Preston Suni. Today, we'll be providing an overview of work permits available for foreign workers in Canada. If you have any questions throughout our presentation today, please enter them into the Q&A chat box at any time. Today, I'm joined by a panel of seasoned CHUG LLP immigration professionals from our Hyderabad office. Our speakers today include Sharmila Karingula, Senior Partner, Michelle Marsukar, Senior Immigration Specialist, and Vijay Krishna Rao, Senior Immigration Specialist. Now, let's get started. There are multiple options available for employers to sponsor foreign temporary workers in Canada. Could you explain these to us, Sharmila? Thank you so much, Sasha, for the lovely introduction. Also, thanks to everyone for joining the session today and a special thanks to Mr. Chuk for encouraging us to have this informative session. This is Sharmila Karimbula, the senior partner from Chuk Consulting India LLP. Now, um, let's get started. There are multiple options available for employers to sponsor foreign temporary workers in Canada. So the Canadian government offers several immigration programs designed for hiring foreign workers. Work permit allows non-Canadians to work in Canada for a certain period. It is essential to be aware of all the immigration methods available, such as temporary foreign worker program, ICT permit, which is called as intra-company transferring through the LMIA, which is known as Labor Market Impact Assessment. This is lengthy and can be expensive for the employer to make sure no eligible Canadian citizens or permanent residents are available for any particular post. And uh, the next goes open work permit and IMP, which is called as International Mobility Program. We'll discuss in more detail about these categories as we move on with our session. Uh, thanks, uh, Sharmila. Uh, if an employer is considering hiring a foreign worker, uh, what are some of the requirements that he should keep in mind, Sharmila? Sure. Um, so the basic requirements for employees to hire a foreign worker has to be real and genuine job offer that can be demonstrated. For example, uh, very obvious from financial statements, the employer should have the ability to pay. Has to be a real company with real business um, and it can be any type of business also can be startup as well. Um, again, also the employer should demonstrate that they have funds to pay the salary. It cannot be the projected income at all and the employer have enough funds to pay the employee's salary in their account and of course generating profit mission. And we have different types of work permits. We have, you know, the employer specific work permit. We have open work permits. Vijay, could you tell us some differences between these two work permits, the open work permit and the employer specific work permit? Uh, yeah, sure, Michelle. Uh, and employer specific work permit allows you to work for a specific employer and it lets you to work in Canada according to the conditions on your work permit, such as the name of the specific employer you, you can work for and the duration allowed it to work in Canada and the location where you can work. The employer must fulfill certain conditions under this category and they must be legally established entities. They must furnish realistic plans to staff the new operation. They must be financially stable enough and must involve in doing legitimate business actively and continuously. They should use the employer portal to submit the offer of employment and pay the compliance fees before the applicant makes an application for a work permit. Whereas uh, the open work permit is a permit uh, that is not job specific, uh, allowing the holder to work anywhere in Canada and for any company. This visa does not specify a particular job or employer, so applicants do not uh, require an LMIA or an offer letter from the employer who has to pay the compliance fees. Open work permits are not meant for those companies who do not comply with the labor requirement in Canada. As for the Canadian uh, immigration regulations, uh, you know, open work permits are commonly applied by international students who have uh, recently graduated from the Canadian post-secondary institution and spouses or common law partners uh, of temporary foreign workers for a certain level of occupation. Persons holding an employer specific work permit in Canada and persons who have applied for a perm permanent residency in Canada are also liable to this. So these are some of the 
you know basic features of an employer specific work permit and an open work permit great um, so that was very informative vijay so uh, the requirements for sponsoring a foreign worker are different depending on whether you are hiring a low wage or a high wage worker michelle could you please explain what are some of those requirements are yeah that that's right um, the labor market impact application process it uh, depends upon the type of uh, you know uh, program that you are hiring for if you are hiring a high wage worker uh, then the foreign national should be the wage of the foreign national it should be above the hourly uh, median wage uh, in whichever province or territory that he is being employed in and the prospective employer will need to submit the lmia or the labor market impact assessment uh, under a high wage uh, stream uh this form will be used to apply for the low wage workers uh, is a totally different uh, guideline altogether and uh, because canada has intru uh, introduced a cap on the number of low wage workers that a business can employ i think it's about 10% of the workforce uh, you know should be uh, should be more than the uh, low wage workers but when you are hiring a low wage worker you need to keep in mind that you know certain conditions have to be met uh you know you they have to be registered with the provincial or the territorial work safety board you they need to have an employer employee contract and you need to ensure that uh, you know they have got affordable housing is available to them so yeah that's how that's the difference between a high wage and uh, the low wage worker and the high wage worker the permit is valid for a two year period and a low wage worker it is for a one year period that was very informative so we have been talking about the lmi in the last few slides and understand that most uh, employers who sponsor a foreign worker will need to file for a labor market impact assessment so can you just brief us what exactly is an lmi and who is required to file one yes a, a labor market impact assessment or the lmi it is a document that an employer in canada will need before they hire a foreign worker Uh, it is a verification process that is carried out by the Employment and Social Development Canada or the ESDC, where they assess the offer of employment, uh, basically to ensure that a foreign worker will not have any negative impact on the Canadian labour market. <clears throat> so for this, the employer will be required to uh, submit a lot of information from uh, why they need to hire a foreign worker to the number of Canadians who have uh, or the permanent residents who have applied for this position. uh the details about the interviews that they that were carried out and why a canadian or a permanent resident was not considered for this position now once that is done and you get a positive uh, lmia then a positive lmia means that now you can go ahead and hire the foreign worker because it shows that there is no there was no canadian worker available for this job how do you go about getting the labor market impact assessment done you would need to submit an application form uh, with all the necessary supporting documents and your application will be assessed by the esdc uh, you know for validity on how whether your business is legitimate whether there is a job offer and uh, the hiring impact this particular position will have on the canadian labor market yeah so that that is basically what goes into the uh, lmia so vijay uh, since lmia requires a job posting and needs to be advertised can you please throw some light on what are some of the advertising requirements associated with an lmia yeah uh, well the first and foremost important aspect uh, is to check before filing the lmia is uh, you will need to advertise the position to make sure there are no qualified local canadians or permanent resident workers so one must conduct at least three different uh, recruitment activities depending upon the high wage and the low wage positions and a job posting must run for four consecutive weeks and an lmi application should be submitted within 3 months from the beginning of the advertisement you must advertise on the uh, government of canada's job bank and one must also conduct at least two additional methods of uh, recruitment that are consistent with the occupation each of the methods used must target a different underrepresented group that may include indigenous persons newcomers and persons with disabilities in addition to that what should employees include in their job advertisement for an lmia 
proper job advertisement should include the company's operating name and addresses. Uh, the job title and duties of the position should be published. And most importantly, the terms of employment, whether it's a project based or it is a permanent position and it should specify the wages and must include the performance base bonuses, incremental raises, if any, and ensure the minimum wage must meet the prevailing wage for that specific job title and location. The advertisement should also mention the work location details. It should include the contact information such as the telephone number, cell number, email addresses and, and the mailing addresses. It should also include the skills requirement uh, such as the education and the work experience. And uh, typically these are a few basic information that goes into the LMI advertisement. After advertising and once all the recruitment steps are complete, when and what should an employer include in their LMI submission? One of the most important things that an employer needs to keep in mind is the uh, time duration or the timelines that the uh, application takes, especially considering the circumstances that we are in now. Uh, there is There are certain delays. So uh, it was suggested that an employer could should submit the LMIA at least prior to six months before the expected uh, job start date. Uh, there is an uh, LMIA processing fee which the employer needs to pay. Once that is done, then the application will be put into processing. And at the time of processing, they will have to demonstrate that they have looked uh, literally high and low for a Canadian or a permanent resident and have actively advertised and could not find a, you know, a local for the position. The documents that need to be put in at the time of filing the uh, LMIA, you will need a signed and dated job offer letter that you have uh, given to the applicant. Uh, and the job offer should have details about the position and uh, you know the salary and the wage etc. You would also need to submit your business information which would include uh, articles of incorporation, your income statements, uh, company licensing, payroll statements for the last 10 months at least and proof that this job has been advertised and interviews have been held and uh, you know that no Canadian was available to uh, fill this particular position. So this is what would uh, go in for at the time of your submission of the LAMIA or the LMIA. We understand that not every person, uh, every position requires an LMIA. Vijay, could you tell us about which types of positions and employees are exempt from an LMIA? Uh, sure, Sharmila. Uh, currently, there are very few categories of employment, uh, you know, which are LMI exempt. To name a few of them, the dependence of foreign workers, skilled workers covering under the NAFTA agreement, the intra-company transferees, the International Experience Canada participants, also known as the working holiday permit holders, and workers in certain industry, namely like athletes and you know, public speakers, medical students, uh, performing artists, etc., are exempted postgraduate uh, temporary work permit holders and lastly the uh, you know, bridging open work permit holders are also exempted. There are certain conditions for LMI exempt work permits. Uh, to mention a few of them are one should stay in the limits of Canadian law while in Canada. They must only be allowed to work for a specific employer and there must be a specific duration for work permit and most importantly one must leave Canada once the you know, permit expires. Uh, nationals of certain countries do not need an LMI but will still require a work permit to enable them to enter and work in Canada. As a part of the process, after the LMI submission is complete, the employer must send a job offer letter to the worker. So, Sharmila, what uh, information should be included in this letter? Could you just brief us on that? Sure. Um, so the employer must send a copy of the positive LMI along with a detailed job offer letter to the foreign skilled worker. Canadian companies are required by Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, which is also called as IRCC, to prepare a formal employment contract or what our industry refers to as a job offer letter. The letter must include um, the job title for the position and uh, job descriptions in detail and the requirements for the temporary position and details about start and end dates and specifics about the salary and of course um, the name and address of the employee. 
The next action plan uh, would be the worker will need to apply for their work permits once uh, we get a positive LMI. So what would be the process like to file for the work permit? Um, so the employer applies for the work permit on behalf of the employee. So the process varies depending on the uh, type of work permit basically. Uh, employer must show strong financial stability to incur all the expenses involved and the applicant must show immigration authorities that um, you will leave Canada at the end of your work permit. For any reason, if you are not able to leave Canada after the expiration of the work permit, you have to change to a different kind of visa as for your eligibility uh, to continue to stay legally in Canada and also make sure you can support yourself financially and support your family at the same time if applicable and must have no criminal record. You must show this by evidencing with a police clear certificate from your country and must not be a danger to Canada. Must be in good health and have a medical exam if needed and must not work for an ineligible employer in Canada. Must provide all documentation required and um, documentation varies from country to country. Due to the current situation, it is now recommended to apply online due to COVID-19 conditions. And also spouses and dependents can be included in the work permit application. And finally, medical exams may be required for national of certain countries. So um, this is the uh, list that we have to take care of. Um, is there anything else yes. that the workers should know about the work permit application process? So applications can be done from outside the country, from within the country and at port of entry. So to apply from outside the country, um, there is no restriction. So anyone can apply from outside the country. But while applying within the country, you, your spouse, common law partner or parents have a valid study or work permit. So you are eligible for a post-graduation work permit and your study permit is still valid. And the one uh, you have a temporary resident permit that is valid for six months or more or you're waiting on a decision on an application for permanent residence from inside Canada. And uh, for applying at port of entry, uh, most people can't apply for a work permit or give their biometrics at a Canadian port of entry right now due to travel restrictions. Uh, you should only apply at the port of entry if you meet certain conditions um, such as um, you're entering Canada from the United States or you have a plan to quarantine for 14 days upon arrival in Canada and uh, when you have a valid job offer. Um, you should be eligible for an electronic travel authorization or to travel without a visitor visa. Additionally, um, there are other requirements depending on type of work permit you are applying for. So for example, for open work permit applicants, applicants um, you must also have a valid job offer while um, the COVID-19 travel restrictions are in place. And for employee specific work permit applicants, your employer must have completed all of the required steps for your employee specific work permit. So also before your travel, you may need to take a medical exam before you come to Canada. And uh, due to COVID-19, you must also have a plan to quarantine for 14 days upon arrival in Canada mission. Now another exciting category of sponsorship is the ICT or the intra-company transferee. Vijay, could you tell us about this type of work permit? Yeah, an intra-company work permit is designed to facilitate the transfer of employees from a foreign based company to its related Canadian company. The purpose of this type of visa is to encourage the transmission of knowledge from uh, foreign senior level or specialized knowledge employees to Canada. A uh, qualified ICT is exempted from the labor market impact assessment and for this reason, the process can be much easier, simpler and most cost effective. Vijay, to understand more about intra-company transferee, uh, what are the requirements for a worker to be sponsored as an intra-company transferee? Yeah, the uniqueness of ICT work permit lies in the eligibility requirement for participating enterprises. There are three types of foreign workers who may be eligible for this program, namely the executives, senior managers and workers with advanced specialized knowledge. Like all other temporary uh, immigration programs, the transferee must comply with certain immigration conditions. Basically, they should uh, you know, currently be employed by a multinational company and who are seeking entry to work in a parent or a subsidiary a branch or an affiliate of that enterprise. They have been working continuously for a full-time basis for their foreign employer 
for at least one year during the last three years and the position offered to them in Canadian entity should be similar to their current position. And lastly, they should be coming to Canada on a temporary basis. So as you know, there will certainly be a process for any given application. What is the specific process to sponsor intra-company transferees? Yeah, as well as the uh, you know, documentation is concerned to apply for an ICT uh, work permit in addition to the general work permit documentation. Uh, one needs to justify the relationship between the multinational enterprise outside Canada and its Canadian entity. Uh, the evidence to prove the applicant's uh, employment with the multinational enterprise in the foreign country and the company's registration documents, the company's uh, financial documents like the tax returns, uh, pay slips, bank statements, etc. And a formal letter needs to be issued to the uh, temporary foreign worker. Uh, coming to the duration part, uh, you know, uh, the initial ICT work permit can be issued for a maximum duration of three years unless uh, it is an office startup which is issued for a one year term. The work permits can be renewed for two years and once uh, the intra company transferees reach their maximum uh, work permit duration, they must complete one year of full term employment in the company outside Canada if they wish to reapply for an ICT to Canada. The extension of an ICT is optional and allows up to a maximum of seven years for executives and senior managers and for specialized knowledge workers it is for five years. Applications under the ICT program qualifies for a two week processing time uh, under the global skills strategy program. There are certain circumstances where a work permit is not required for a foreign national to work in Canada. Uh, Sharmila, could you explain some of these circumstances where a work permit would not be required? Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, certain job types do not require a work permit, but the individual must also uh, meet additional exemption criteria for each job type. For example, um, emergency service provider, athlete or coach or the public speaker, news reporter and few more other categories come under work permit exemptions. So we have been talking about work permits uh, and the different types of work permits, the validity of the work permits. Uh, Sharmila, when should an employee extend the temporary workers work permit? Interesting question, uh, Michelle. So uh, the temporary worker is eligible to apply to extend or change the conditions of the work permit. So uh, can extend the employment beyond the expiry date of the work permit and can change their occupation or wages substantially and hire them after they have worked in Canada for a different employer. Um, so if the worker has an open work permit, temporary workers with an open work permit don't need to renew or extend their permit to be begin working for a new employer. They only need to extend their work permit if it's about to expire. And before applying to extend work permit, you need to either apply for a new LMIA from Employment and Social Development Canada or submit a new offer of employment and pay the employer compliance fee if you don't need an LMIA. So the temporary worker should apply at least 30 days before the expiry date of their original work permit to extend their work permit. Yeah, uh, thank you Sharmila. That was really brief and interesting to know the facts. Uh, Michelle, uh, what are the important responsibilities that employers of foreign workers should keep in mind? Uh, yes, at the time of hiring a foreign national, uh, the, there is a lot of responsibility that the uh, Canadian employer needs to uh, take. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, firstly, he needs to be responsible for the worker that he has hired. And uh, the company has to comply by all the employment standards like the labor laws and the conditions that have been set in the job offer itself, ensuring that you know the employee is compensated and all the compensation benefits are paid out to the employee. Uh, most importantly, the employer needs to keep all the documentation for at least six years from the time the work permit is issued uh, because there can be a random inspections from the government authorities. Yeah, considering the times that we've been living, if we are right now and the pandemic, uh, I'm sure it has impacted a lot of aspects of the Canadian immigration. So, Sharmila, could you just explain how the pandemic has impacted sponsorship for travel of the foreign worker to Canada? So, at the current COVID conditions, uh, most of the employees can employees can still sponsor new workers. 
but the application process cannot be normally processed by the uh, Canadian government mission and cannot provide accurate processing timelines either. So as a temporary worker, you're exempt from travel restrictions. If you're coming for an essential purpose and uh, meet the following criteria, such as um, you have a valid work permit and normally live in Canada, and you're a worker who meets all of the following as a letter of introduction for a work permit, uh, open work permit or employer specific, and has a valid job offer, can work once you enter Canada and complete your 14 day quarantine unless you're exempt. So basically the employer should have a plan in place to how to operate during this uh, crunching time. You have a plan to quarantine for 14 days upon arrival in Canada and also a place to stay, a plan to get to your destination and get groceries or the needs and also access essential services and medical care, which is more important. And you have a valid job offer as well and you meet all other requirements to apply at a port of entry. So certain people who can work without a permit may also be exempt from travel restrictions. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, so that brings us to the end of our presentation for today. We have about 20 to 30 minutes left to answer your questions. If you haven't already, please submit your question into the Q&A box. Um, we have received some questions so far, so uh, let's just dive right in here. Our first question is, can a US-based company place or request Canadian work permit? Yes, a US based company can uh, apply or place a request for a Canadian work permit. But the most important thing to remember is that wherever you are placed, you also have to have an entity in Canada for you to be able to move your employee from because you're moving from one organization to another. So you have to have an entity in Canada also. So uh, we, just, we have a uh, question. So do we need a Canada lawyer to do this to get permanent residence in Canada? Uh, yeah, Shamila, yes, of course, uh, uh, because Canadian uh, work permits uh, deals with uh, certain laws and regulations and uh, not everybody, uh, not everybody is aware of such, uh, uh, you know, uh, laws. So uh, legal, uh, you know, attorney should be required to file uh, file a work permit in Canada. Um, how easy is it to sponsor a tech worker in Canada? IT by tech, if you, if you mean IT, it's, it's uh, basically Canada is open to all job markets and uh, it's not it's not very difficult to hire. So are we talking about are you going to hire somebody in Canada, a Canadian person, or are you going to hire somebody outside Canada and move them to uh, move them to Canada? It, it depends um, upon various uh, factors here. Yeah. If a person's contract has expired, they were on a temporary work permit in Canada, if I'm understanding this question correctly, um, it has expired and they would like to stay in Canada, um, what other visa options are available to them? Vijay, uh, I think you can take this. Uh, yeah, you have 30 days uh, uh, time frame to file an extension and uh, if uh, the work permit expires. Ideally, you should be leaving the country and uh, give a give a notice uh, to the immigration department on that. The other status um, that can be transferred from the work permit would be the best option would be to transfer to the student visa. So for the time being, and once the course is done, like you know, if the work is available in the open market, you can go back to the work permit again. But again, um, as Vijay said, um, the minimum time period would be 30 days to leave the country um, once the work permit is uh, ended. Someone else is asking, what would be the next steps if I have a work permit, but I would like to be a resident of Canada? What next steps can I take? Yeah, for you to apply for a PR to Canada, you need to firstly, um, there, are, there are a lot of qualifying factors that you need to keep in mind to apply for a permanent resident in uh, Canada. Uh, you know, you have, should have stayed in the country for at least uh, more than a year above uh, certain monetary conditions that you would need to fill, fulfill. Uh, earlier question, somebody asked, do I need an attorney? So this is what your attorney would be able to judge and tell you whether you qualify or not for a PR. 
but uh, basically you need to be able to, you need to be self sufficient and you need to have a job offer to be able to apply for a pr in canada we are just waiting to see if we have any other question submissions feel free to submit your questions into the chat box and uh, just a reminder that uh, for case specific questions um, it may vary based on the individual so please uh, if you'd like help with any case specific questions please send us an email at info at tube.com so uh, basically uh, for any given case like it has to be validated case by case uh, a generic answer cannot be uh, given for any question so there will be several factors you know before we validate and give an opinion so obviously that's why there are a lot of factors that has to be um, uh, validated before we give us uh, give any opinion on that if you do have any additional questions that come up for you, please feel free to email one of our presenters with the contact information we have displayed on this screen, or you can also send an email to info at choose.com. Yeah, thank you so much for attending our presentation today. So we hope that you stay safe and have a wonderful rest of the week and a weekend ahead. Thank you.